Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. Where last time we went to the Winter Palace in Orlay. We tried to prevent the assassination of Empress Selene and we did so successfully by de defeating Duchess Florian who was secretly working with Griffius. We also reconciled Briala and Selene who are now ruling together. And we got the Duke Gaspard arrested for crimes against the Empire. So everything is fine and dandy in Halamshiral. We even got a new advisor. Morgan has joined us, which we will see in a little bit. And today uh, we are going to have a little bit of a slower episode. We're going to talk to everybody, see what everybody thinks of Halamshiral. Advance a few personal storylines, if we haven't already. We've been ignoring Blackwall for a while now, so uh, let's uh, let's talk to him for a bit. Your name Blackwall doesn't sound Orlesian. Marcher then, Ferelden. I was from the Free Marchers originally. Markham. That was a long time ago. Another life. I hear that many wardens were once criminals. Not just wardens, it seems. Your own past isn't spotless. I'm sure you'd rather leave it behind you. As would I. What did you do before you became a warden? I was... a soldier. A, a nobody trained to wield a sword and follow orders. I grew weary of fighting other men's wars. So you became a warden? More or less. Becoming a Grey Warden... It's the first time I felt like I mattered. The life I led before seems hollow in comparison. Perhaps one day it will fade away. Why did you join the Wardens? Because they remember honor and sacrifice. Words that have little meaning to the rest of us. Because they lay down their lives for those they have sworn to protect. We all need to believe there are such men in the world. I needed to believe I could be one of them. We can continue this discussion at another time. Very well. Alright, something to read. Way of the Champion. Ah, yeah, of course. We are a warrior and I see a Quizmaster. I return, Inquisitor, as does the quiz -quisition. The Quizquisition. Now, and there is a time. Right? Fearing that Nugs carry the blight, Kirkwall declared what? the noxious vermin in 520 exalted. The extermination is known as... What? The Battle of Squealing Plains. It is not spoken of in polite company. Correct. <laughs> well played. I didn't know that. We will continue. When I have time, and the wind calls me for the All right, bye-bye. I didn't know that about the Nugs and Kirkwall. <laughs> you see, you learn something every time you play. Stable Boy's Letters. A personal letter written in halting, simple hands. Great. All right, let's do a little bit of inventory management. All right, with that out of the way, let's go talk to... Who shall we do first? Shall we do... Uh, I think we're going to start upstairs. Then work our way down. So let's head over to Liliana. Liliana, here you are. So it's true. Some look to Cassandra or even me. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I never thought the idea would gain momentum. There is, after all, no shortage of vultures circling the Samba throne. Is becoming divine something you really want? When Justinia was alive, I would have laughed at anyone who even suggested that I could be her successor. 
Things have changed. Still, I don't know. Restoring the Chantry will be like trying to steer a sinking vessel through a storm. No one would fault you for abandoning ship, you know. Out of the ship and straight into the sea. You think Thedas hates mages now? If the Chantry falls, don't you think the people will blame magic? Look at all that's happened. Kirkwall's Chantry, the war, the breach. Mages are always involved. Without the Chantry to guide, that hatred will spiral out of control. Wow. You really don't think highly of the Dosians. <laughs> the people care only for simple things. Their world is small, and everything beyond it is unknown and something to fear. They will continue to live like this, unless they can be shown another way. But this is a discussion for later. If Corypheus wins, finding a new divine will be the least of our problems. Right. Anything else? At your service, my lady. Let's talk about you. Me? Yes, you. Bards tell tales. I bet you tell some good ones. There are plenty of tales in the library. Ooh. <laughs> what did you do before you worked for the Divine? I was a bard, an Norwegian spy for many years. For a time, I also served a small cloister in Lothring. After the Blight, the Divine called on me to oversee her personal network. Hmm. I should lead you to your work. We can always talk later. Yes? You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. You have a history with the Warden who ended the Blight, don't you? She's always in my thoughts. Even when we're far apart, my love is on a quest of her own. When the Inquisition has no further need of me, I will join her, for good this time. I have lost enough. I will not lose her as well. What do you know of Morrigan? She's changed. She used to be so disagreeable, cruel. She said things just to hurt people. I don't think she ever now did the that. Edges have worn away. Perhaps it was Kira. She seems so normal, like any other little boy, and so polite. Not that I was expecting anything else. I mean, never mind. Hmm. Maybe you do know more about the Dark Ritual. Do those companions know about the Dark Ritual? I always assumed that they were just told that Riordan was wrong and a Grey Warden didn't have to die. Morrigan disappeared right after the fight, so they wouldn't have known she was pregnant. So unless they were told about it... Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. They say you spent some time in Lothering. Did you know the champion? We spoke a few times. I seldom left the Chantry, and we never became more than casual acquaintances. I saw more of the Hulk twins. Bethany in particular. She would spend time in meditation at the Chantry, and she seemed to like my stories. The other one, the young man, he was a little surly. I did encounter the champion again later in Kirkwall. Those were terrible times. Was this when the Chantry was destroyed? No, that happened later. But even then, the news coming out of Kirkwall was disheartening. There were some in Valrayo who wanted the Divine to declare an exalted march on Kirkwall. Justina sent me there to see if that could be avoided, to gather evidence to calm those agitating for war. I guess it didn't matter in the end. We can continue this conversation later. Oh, come on. I wanted to ask about Josephine. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. You seem to know Josephine quite well. I met her a long time ago, but we didn't become good friends until years later. After the Blight, in fact. I'd just returned to Valrayu, and she welcomed me back by throwing a diplomatic ball. She was the Antivan ambassador at the time, you see. The ball was... Alright. Too many politicians. At midnight, Josie and I left to find a real party. 
We've been friends ever since. What do you consider a real party? It's not a real party until someone's small clothes are pinned to a chantry board. And that's all I'm saying about it. <laughs> we can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. Alright. Up next is Dorian. Uh, let's turn in some research while we are here. Or maybe we can go and talk to... Vivian first. My dear, I'm afraid I must ask you for help. Hmm. Already. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivian. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Heralds. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. You want me to risk my life to get this thing for you, but won't tell me what it's for? My dear, it is hardly proper for me to blab the secrets of those who put trust in my discretion. I would do no less for you, after all. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other wyvern sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen into political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. Right, why not? I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success. Anything else? It took a great deal of skill to win that title for the elves, but you surely know it will end in a bloodbath. I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royale. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I have never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. If the circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. 
Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin, but Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago to let her spend time gardening. <laughs> All right, that's enough Vivian for one day. Ooh, this is open now. Which is nice, which means we can go to the gardens. There's nothing here at the moment, of course. Oh, <laughs> that took a while. Alchemy notes. A suitable replacement for the Prometheus root must be derived, as the plant went extinct during the second blight. Dried rat moss cut from a wandering hill has shown similar restorative effects. An emulsion of sylphurite and elf root extract can counteract the fatal toxicity of rat moss. The solution must be heated for exactly 75 minutes with magical flame. Mundane fires, regardless of fuel type, have been found to burn at too low a temperature. The heart of the snowy wyvern must be added at the last possible moment. Compound becomes unstable when exposed to light, even if stored in perfect darkness, it is only viable for three days. It begins to degrade in potency in a matter of hours, and experimentation has shown that the age regression effect decreases steadily over time from the moment it is synthesized. By the second day, the results are almost too subtle to detect, and by the third, it is entirely useless. Can't make heads or tails of this. Age regression? Who is this potion for? All right. Dorian, where are you, my dear? Marvelous business, the Winter Palace. Yes. Saving the day, reconciling lovers, mediating a civil war. So sugary, it's nauseating. All this dancing, politics, and murder ah, makes me a bit homesick. 
That's something you'd like to do more often, then. Watch as you twist an entire empire around your little finger. Yes, please. Of course, that leaves only to Vinter. And it wouldn't work as well there. No? Why not? Our dances are so much more intense. If an evening lacks a murder, we sniff and call it a ball. Mm -hmm. I hope you tried the ham they were serving, by the way. Tasted of despair. It's fascinating. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinta, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. Some more than others. Some people have superior taste. Now, oh, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinter is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war, and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Devinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Deventer? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters. I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Deventer here. If the Venatori succeed, It'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I should go. Try not to kill anyone without me. Right. Despite the fact that Dorian obviously doesn't agree with the way the winter is run, he is awfully quick to kill everybody who opposes him. But that's a discussion for another time. Solus. There are spirits hovering by the veil to observe the thrones of powerful nations. The machinations, betrayals. After our time in Halam Shirao, I understand why. I had forgotten how I missed court intrigue. You miss court intrigue? Ooh, he disapproves. Oh, well, never directly, of course. An elven apostate is rarely invited to speak with empresses and kings. But from the Fade, I have watched dynasties form and empires crumble. It is sometimes savage, sometimes noble, 
and always fascinating. In any event, Selene should now be a steadfast ally. And Brianna as well, thanks to your efforts on her behalf. I liked it. The Inquisition gets a valuable ally, and perhaps your people will get better treatment in Orlais. How will mages be treated better? Oh, you mean elves? I'm sorry, I was confused. I do not consider myself to have much in common with the elves. Who do you have much in common with? Who are your people? A good question. I joined the Inquisition to save the world. Regardless of who my people are, this was the best way to help them. As for the Elves of Orlais, I believe Briala is doing quite well on their behalf. She is an admirable woman. Excellent. You avoided answering that question very well. She's done good work. Hopefully, with our help, she can help them even more. Yes. However much I identify, or fail to identify, with her people, Briala's efforts have been remarkable. She organized resistance against a powerful enemy, using only her wits and the resources at hand. That demands respect, especially in a world where most would look at her and only see a pair of pointed ears. Right. Um, Colin, what do you have to say? Close all you like. I have this one. Are you sassing me, Commander? I didn't know you had it in you. Why do I even... Inquisitor. Leaving, are you? Does this mean I win? Please don't stop on my account. All right. Your move. You need to come to terms with my inevitable victory. You'll feel much better. Really? Because I just won, and I feel fine. Don't get smug. There will be no living with you. I should return to my duties as well. Unless you would care for a game. Sure. Prepare the board, Commander. As a child, I played this with my sister. She would get this stuck-up grin whenever she won, which was all the time. My brother and I practiced together for weeks. Oh, the look on her face the day I finally won. Between serving the Templars and the Inquisition, I haven't seen them in years. I wonder if she still plays. You have siblings. Two sisters and a brother. Where are they now? They moved to South Reach after the Blight. I do not write to them as often as I should. Oh, it's my turn. I don't think she would let him win. Um, cheating? Yeah, maybe if we knew each other a little bit better. You know, just for fun, trying it out. But I think we would play fair for now. All right, let's see what you've got. This may be the longest we've gone without discussing the Inquisition, or related matters. To be honest, I appreciate the distraction. You can't be serious all the time. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> I believe this one is yours. Well played. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Anything else? I'd be perfectly happy never again setting foot in the Winter Palace. It wasn't the gossip and backstabbing, I know what the game entails, but the indifference to it all. Showing interest reveals weakness, something nobles are quick to exploit. No doubt you're right. The Chantry can be the same. Their politics are less extravagant, but just as heated. The Empress rules a country. The Divine influences half a continent. I'd like to know more about the Templars. What would you like to know? Do the Templars do anything besides hunt mages? 
Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates, or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession at the least. You've lived in the Circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a Circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's harrowing, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. Do Templars and mages never speak to each other? Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The night captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. 13? That's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course, but there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages, that sort of thing? There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyrium and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Excellent! A letter. Dear Mia, I am still alive. Your loving brother, Colin. Honestly, is it so difficult? We thought you were dead. Again! If the Inquisition was not on everybody's lips, we would never have heard that their fine commander survived Haven. We've been hearing strange things about the Templars lately. I am not sorry you left them. I thought your resignation was implied when you joined the Inquisition, but you meant something more, didn't you? It's a fool's errand asking you to stay safe, but please try. Your loving sister, see how easy this is, Mia. Very well. And since we are here, next up is Cole. I didn't understand the Grand Ball. It would have been easier if they said what they wanted. What did you think of the masks? What masks? The masks. <laughs> Everyone had them on their faces. Those weren't their faces. All right. I'll talk to you later. Yes. Nothing for now. Let's go talk to Sarah. Oh, the door's closed. I see. 
One for the Empress. For Gaspar. Briana. The Duchess. And Christmas. Right in the dangle bag. Well, remind me to stay on your good side. Don't worry, you're sparkling compared to that lot. A cook here, a footman there. What's it matter, right, so long as there's a book for the throne? A pretty one, sure. But how many lives are worth one empress's arse? Ugh, that place. Should have just thrown in some bees and slammed the doors. I don't know. You want to stop a party, I think you go earwigs. <laughs> I hate those things, with their little pinchy butts. Josephine should add that to her paper threats. <laughs> you know the real lesson from all this? Never sleep with an empress. Yes, that's we the real lesson. Fat, Briala and the Celine. But without their breakup, none of it would have happened like that. That was a mistake on their part. It made everything worse. Wrong way around, Inquisitor. It started worse. Lots of people died before there was a hole in the sky. That's who you're saving. If you get a chance, maybe remind them not to be idiots. Sure. Let's see, any of anything new? There is something new. Uh, her mask, big head, his mask, tight face. The Lancet corset lacing, snip point floppity. <laughs> okay. The doodle of a googly eyed face with a peculiar mustache. That's not a face. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Anything else, Sarah? Hey, you. You have time? It's not a question. Let's go. I've got something I want to do for you. Just come. You won't need your gear and stuff. All right. <laughs> With you, I'll do anything. I bet, yeah. Come on, let's do it. We're eating on a roof. They're horrible, right? And raisins. Ugh. I freaking still hate cookies. You know, this is about as far from what I expected as we could get. I got caught stealing when I was little, yeah? You get alienage or worse for that, but the Lady Emold took me in. She was sick and couldn't have children. I had no parents. It worked out. Anyway, she gets a year sicker, so I ask her about cookies. Because mums make cookies. I can pass that down or something. Turns out, she couldn't cook. She missed that talk with her mum. The ones she made, she'd bought and pretended. Ah, oh, right. Well, no, she was a bitch. She hid buying them by keeping me away from the baker. She did that by lying that he didn't like me, didn't like elves. She let me hate so she could protect her pride. I hated him so much and I hated... Well, she died and I hate pride. Pride cookies. But this is great, Pride you're cookies. great. So I thought maybe me and you could make some. I don't know, us cookies. Because then I could like them again. Oh, it's stupid. I don't understand. This Lady Emold was just trying to be good to you. She hurt people. It was just cookies. It was not just cookies. Lie to herself, fair play, only hurts her. But she made me think there was something wrong with me. And the baker? I made his life shit. Why not? It seemed like he deserved it. I mean, if you don't give a child a cookie because of appearances, you're a monster. Stupid pride whore noble. I know, I said it was stupid. That's why I want to get rid of it. I want to make better cookies. You know what? That would be great. See, I knew. Wait, really? Because it seemed friggin' daft every step to me. Suppose it's not really about them. I hate learning lessons. Makes my stomach hurt. Anyway, I'll throw this rubbish away. Next time we'll be better, yeah? Sarah. Anytime. Can we get off the roof now? 
Oh, yes, please. It smells like bird and dank. This part, not a good idea. Thanks, yeah. Feels good, this. Okay, cookies. Krem. Inquisitor. Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the Chargers? A few Orlesian nobles didn't like how things ended at the Winter Palace. They're not rebelling outright, but they brought in mercenary companies in preparation. The Chargers have a good reputation. If we go in, we can buy the companies out from underneath them. The nobles will lose the men they met for causing trouble, and the Inquisition gets some fresh blood. We'll talk later. Excellent. Bo, you got something to say? You know I've got no problem with Orlesians, but Halam Sharal was a mess. At least under the Cune, you don't get everyone tripping on each other's dicks while the country goes to crap. Corypheus had agents sowing dissent and muddying the waters. That's just it. Orle is so vulnerable. If you killed everyone in the Triumvirate, the Cune would survive unchanged. I don't know. The Kuhn isn't perfect, but it doesn't care what any single person wants. Orle hmm. is full of people who care about nothing else. That's an interesting way to look at it. Oh, bartender. Inquisitor. Any news? What's the word out there? Orle wants war, now talks, now fashionable hats. Now they've seen something shiny. What's the current mood? Sprightly. Sprightly. <laughs> As you were. Inquisitor. Right. I see Cassandra wants to talk, so maybe save her for last. We still have Varric and Josephine to do. Or to talk to, not to do. I need to have a few words with my publisher. The first one will be you, and the second one will be Bastard. They've claimed for years my crime serials don't sell in Orlais. So why is the Council of Heralds asking me for autographs? Sorry, distracted. Anyway, you need something. Um... No, not now. Carry on. Then, Josephine. I told them the offer was the best thing. And we have somebody to judge as well, I see. How bracing to be in the thick of the game again. The last time I was at Alam Shiral was Countess Letienne's wedding. There were a dozen affairs, five secret alliances, and a duel between two chevaliers over the vintage of an Antivan port. But until the Duchess was en masse, I've never seen the Winter Palace in shock. No one can say the evening wasn't memorable. They've already begun composing songs about it in Val Royale, no doubt. The game's become increasingly insular in the past few years. Corypheus skillfully took advantage. It's disturbing so few people in the Orlesian court were aware of the Duchess's machinations. You'd think the game's greatest players would spot a murderer in their midst. As I said, insularity. Familiar rivals become the only ones worth sparring with. But let's not lose sight of victory. Your actions at the ball have secured us allies and favors alike. Hmm. How did we feel about the ball? I think it was... As it was something she has never done before, I think she found it pretty exciting. Not just because of the ball and the dancing, which obviously was fun, but also because of, you know, the sneaking around, investigating the place, finding out every little secret. So yeah, it was exciting. Playing the game was thrilling. We did just make history. Indeed. Tales of this affair have begun circulating in Val Royale. Although I do wish Varric would show a bit more restraint in his accounts of the evening. <laughs> right. So, we have... We have talked to everybody, except Cassandra, I believe. Yeah, we've talked to everybody except Cassandra. Uh, she wants to talk to us about the... Uh, undoubtedly about the divine thing she and Liliana are asked for. 
So we'll do that next episode. Next episode, we'll also try see if we can get a little bit further with Sarah now that we've had cookies on the roof. And of course, we need to go and talk to Morgan. But that is in the next episode. This has been everything for today. I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye.